This is the recording starting. It is. It's going. Thank you. And welcome to the, just for the who is watching the recording, welcome to the weekly community call for chaos on January 12th. Um, we have a pretty light agenda, but we'll, we'll jump through it um, really quick. So first one is that um, we have a few guests from, uh, uh, I think he said it was a startup Merico. Um, they have shared with us some white paper information on what they're doing there. So take a look at that in the minutes if you get a chance. Um, do we want to talk more about that or do we want to move ahead? What do we what do we want to do? Maybe let's move ahead and we can maybe I was going to take a look at it. Give us some. Okay. You're going to time slice points. time slice your brain with the reading and the reading. That's right. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, okay, cool. So the next item on the list is um, this was brought up from the DNI working group that happened a few days ago and last week, I guess. Um, so Nicole, I don't think Nicole is on here, but she brought up an, this idea of being a little more deliberate and purposeful with chaos marketing efforts. Um, so she was thinking she would like to lead that. And if anyone is is interested in, in helping out with that effort, uh, any outreach or marketing kind of um, initiatives, uh, let's reach out to Nicole. I wonder if I should put her email in here. Or I, I would also say, or if you can, if you're able to attend the DNI working group um, meetings, that might also be a good place to, to connect with her because she's usually there. Um, this other idea was brought up as the state of the metrics report. That was another idea that we thought might be um, interesting for the community and also helpful and would give a little bit more visibility to chaos. So I don't know if we want to talk about that right now, if that's something we want to just kind of marinate on. Uh, what do you all think? Uh, the state of the metrics report is an idea that Sean and I have kind of been discussing a little bit. So, and it, it was brought up as an answer to the, how can we market uh, chaos better? And uh, my, my thought was that uh, uh, being able to generate a report for an ecosystem uh, based on chaos metrics, kind of similar to uh, the uh, diversity and inclusion report we saw in the past from OpenStack. Uh, but including including other metrics, some inclusivity metrics, some other metrics, uh, might be a, an interesting way for people to consume the metrics. I was thinking about the marketing. This comment that Nicole brought up last time, or in the DNI working group. Um, I don't think any of us are really marketers on this call. I'm guessing, maybe. Um, I, my, one of my thoughts was that we could, oh, em, Emily, you were unmuted for a second there. Where are you? You caught that, didn't you? <laughs> I, see, I did yeah. see that. That's why I use gallery view, just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I actually do marketing for uh, IEEE SA Open for the um, platform that we're doing. So I had spoke to Nicole at the last meeting about that as well and told her that I would definitely be, um, I would love to be involved in that. And I think Nicole is actually helping us uh, with some of our processes and things like that for the uh, marketing groups that we have. So I'm definitely, you know, in and I expressed that to her as well. So. Okay, cool. Uh, would there be any, anything to be said for reaching out to folks at the LF? that do marketing there as well. I don't know quite what the relationship is. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what that looks like as well. Um, and that might be something that we could just, you know, take to Nicole and see if she has any ideas on that and then how we can okay. move forward with that. Okay, sounds good. Cool, thank you. So what do we want to do with the state of the metrics report? Do we want to, is this something that we want to set as a goal for some period of time this year? Or do we want to try to do it like right now at the beginning of the year? Or what do we, what do we want to do? What's our next step? I, 
I just think it would make sense to happen after the, the metrics release that's happening this quarter. Um, just in terms of if you want to involve more folks from the group, it, I would assume that that should take priority and that this could happen after that. But also we might have some learnings from that process or have new metrics to share that could be part of the report itself. And similar, similar to the community reports, we should probably try to, it shouldn't be like a definitive look at all of the metrics. It should be maybe a couple of metrics from each working group and then we point those metrics at an ecosystem. So is the state of the metrics report to not only highlight metrics that are being developed in the different working groups, but is, is it also to demonstrate the metrics in practice? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So with the, with the OpenStack diversity and inclusion report, uh, I've always thought that was a, a really good uh, marketing example because it, it was highly citable, right? People could, people could cite that report to kind of like, this is what open source is looking like in this community. So uh, it gives us, a, it gives us a, 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 a citable way that people can use our metrics. So let's say if we, if we take these metrics and just kind of point them at the, the Linux Foundation ecosystem, for example, that might be something that would be useful to the Linux Foundation, but it would also be something that would be highly citable uh, for others who are, who are looking at open source or working with open source projects. Okay. All right. Okay, so I think it sounds like this is definitely something, I, th I think personally I think it's an awesome idea and I think we should do it. Um, yeah. I don't see why, why we wouldn't. No, it seems like a really good way of making what we're doing more practical for people and, and also make us more visible in the utility. Yeah. You're really quiet, Sean. Um, really? Okay. Um, I've been having trouble with my new office. Let me see if I can fix that. Is this any better when I stand closer to the mic? A little bit. All right. Let me let me work on that. Okay, so I'm gonna just recommend that we um I, I agree with you, Sophia, about kind of waiting until this release. So this is gonna be maybe something we will work on like April ish. Um, so let's ta table it for now. And if you have ideas, whatever, just kind of keep them to the side, write them down in a little notepad or something. And then in April, we'll revisit this and, and um, reopen and look and try to figure out how we wanna proceed with it. Is this any better? Uh, you're it's making a lot of noise in addition to being louder. <laughs> There's right. a lot of background noise. Yeah, I'm going to step away and turn off all of my little air cleaning devices. Could you also mute? <laughs> hey, wait, can somebody mute him? Well, oh, I oh, forget. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I'll switch over and mute him. There, thank you. Yay. <laughs> Elizabeth, your your microphone is now not working very well for some reason. Yeah. It turned into a robot. Yeah, it's like it's really crackly. I can take over. Um sure. I have oh. just I guess one question it's not really a question it's more of a just a um i know kevin you had mentioned a couple of ideas that you had for the state of the metrics report in terms of say applying metrics maybe focusing on a few focusing on a community focusing on a project um if you have any other guidance or prompts like that if you could share them in the next few months just so in case we stumble across something that might be really interesting because i know I, i'm going to be looking at a lot of data in the next few months because we're, we're starting all of our year-end reporting 
Um, so I think it's a great time to have sort of those prompts in my brain as I look at a lot of data so that maybe we'll have interesting ideas come by March. Uh, maybe, maybe the first step would be to uh, create a proposal document and share it so that everyone can kind of add their ideas into that. Uh, would, would that be helpful? It would be for me, but I know I work like everyone else. <laughs> I will put that on my to-do list. Thank you. I think it would be helpful also, is my sound better? Okay. Elizabeth, are you back? You tell me. You are not. No, all right, okay. All right, so um, let's take a look where we're at here. Oh, okay, so we've been getting, so we've been starting to get, I'm, um, I'm going to share my screen real quickly. So we're here. Um, we've been starting to get um, requests for community reports. And um, the question is, is, is on the chaos homepage, Kevin, this is kind of looking at you just a little bit. But yeah. right now, if somebody wants to request a community report, it's under initiatives. And this is where they can start a DNI badging request, mm -hmm. or they could start a request for a community report. The initiatives are also here. And so is there a way that we were just talking in um, the community report meeting earlier today, but it, it's a little bit buried in terms of how you get community reports one. And then two is as we generate community reports, it's possible for people that are requesting the report to say, yeah, it's no problem. You can share the report with others so that they can get a sense of what a report looks like. Um, so I don't know if you have thoughts on how we could kind of make that more visible. One of the thoughts, for example, we had was in this zone right here of the page, community health analytics, open source software, where it says learn more, there could be another button here that says request community report, you know, community health report, another button right here that says, you know, um, um, for the DNI badging, for the, you know, requested DNI event badge, something along those lines that it's not buried. I don't know what, what your one thoughts of the things are. Maybe we should think about, and this would actually be really good to get maybe Nicole's feedback because she does have quite a bit of experience with content and marketing, is we should we should maybe just take a step back and think about what what is it that we want people to do when they hit yeah. our homepage and do more of a kind of a, I forget what you call it, like a content design or something like that. Because you can see, we also, you know, we spotlight the chaos cast. So midway down through the thing, we have this big banner that spotlights the chaos cast. But I think we should we should think about because right now we have we have laundry list links of you know links to stuff. But mm -hmm. I do think it might be good to take a more deliberate a deliberate look at what we want people to do. Okay, no, that's and I great. think community health reports and DNI badging would be probably right up there. Um, so as a, to your point then to not just, let's just add more buttons. Let's take a step back and say, what, maybe what don't we need on here? And yeah. what are we really trying to put in front of people? That's, that's good. Right. I think that's a, that's a great point. One of the, one of the to do's or issues we have created right now is actually to do a, a, a marketing audit of the website. Uh, and the purpose of that marketing audit is ex to figure out exactly what you were talking about, Don. Uh, what do we want them to do when we get there, and what are we what are we selling, basically? Uh, Who is that marketing audit with? Do we? Uh, so the I created the issue, and then I've been in discussions with. Uh, oh, I I forget her name. Uh, okay. Sorry, that's okay. But so it, it is kind of happening. Okay. Well, it's 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 basically a to do list until we can find 
someone with the marketing expertise to help us out with it. <laughs> yeah, I do think maybe Nicole would be a good person to start with. I also think Matt Broberg would have some interesting insights. For sure. Okay. Is it Vinya? Yes, that's... yeah, that's who I was chatting with yeah. it about prior. Yeah, totally, she'd be great. Uh, but I don't, she wasn't exactly offering her time on it, so I, I think she's busy, so. Uh, perhaps we could put all of those minds together and figure it out. Okay, it's a lot of minds, but we can do it. Just taking notes. Okay, great, thank you. As far as the actual task of adding a button goes, though, that's uh, that's fairly tri trivial, and I I can do that very very quickly if you uh, if you're requesting one. You can also replace the podcast button with a report button. At least for now, I think we can highlight the reports. Yeah, we we could certainly do that. That uh. That call out area is is a uh, is a temporary call out area, right? So we we kind of highlight whatever kind of new thing is going on right now, which is why the, the podcast was there. Uh, when the when the chaos commons come up, usually the chaos commons live in there as well. Uh, and we need to add a page where we uh, post the reports which we are publishing, like the one which we are generating the reports. Since like, now we have two reports which will be finalized today and we have to make it public on the website we so we have two that are available for that to are be on going the website? to be available yeah that are going to be available by tomorrow i guess okay still to, to don's point i think um maybe sooner rather than later to think about the website but I also agree with temporarily putting a, a link to that so that we don't we don't sideline giving this some um, you know some additional visibility while we figure out the bigger issues. Okay. So is it should I put together a temporary working group to figure this out and just invite some people to that? Yeah. That sounds like a good We do we do start. have the web page meeting or the web content meeting. Or the marketing stuff that's kicking off. Either one of those would be maybe good places for this. Okay. I'll just, uh, how about if I, uh, for the next web content meeting, I will in we'll put the marketing stuff on the agenda and I will invent, invite uh, uh, those three people that were mentioned okay. uh, specifically to see if they will come and talk to us. Great. Okay. Elizabeth, you back? I don't even know. How does technology even work? I can't figure it, it out. Is it, that better at all? <laughs> yeah, somehow. Just messing <laughs> with the Zoom. Uh, it sounded it sounded like a loose connection, like something just wasn't quite plugged in right. That's what it sounded uh, like. That's also possible. Yeah. Uh, technology. Okay. Uh, so the next item on the list is the LFX webinar, and there's a link there. I'm not sure just who put, put it, that in there. I did. I just saw this. It just came across a feed from Mike Dolan. It's about LFX insights. So folks might be interested to attend. This is the what it is, right? It's about how the LFX insights page uh, can be used to give you some insights on um, community activity. It might be worth checking out. Thanks, Matt. You whip got bad again. Where? 
yourself fell over yesterday to I don't know what you something to you. Oh I just saw your hands, really. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and um, the next thing is project badging came up today. So many of you know that the DNI events badging is is off and running. So we've badged our first event. We have another one going through the process right now. Um, and we have some really nice momentum in terms of um, project or um, sorry, event badging. And the question was, is um, that came up today is whether or not we should start a badging process for um, projects. This has always been on the the horizon following events. We wanted to do one at a time. Um, Matt Snell and Asta have worked out really nice process on GitHub for events. And the idea is to really just um, move that same process over for projects. A um, couple comments on this. Um, so the general take is, is yes. A main concern that I have for me is that if you're all familiar, the DNI badging processes are human. They require human reviews, people, <laughs> per, per, and, and that's just hard. I mean, it's building out a, a set of reviewers and editors and people to kind of watch the process is time intensive. So I'm not sure how to overcome that. And it, it is seriously a concern for me because I don't want to offer a process and then not be able to deliver on it, you know, as projects are going through it. So I don't know if anybody has comments on that, but it's a big concern that I have. Or nobody has the concern or you share the concern or whatever. <laughs> Nonetheless, I, I yeah, share the concern. My thought right now is to maybe stay focused on the event badging and help that take off before we divert our attention and add another okay. in initiative. OK. Um, I, I know that there is some, uh, I guess maybe one of the reasons this came up is there are some organizations that have expressed an interest in project batching. So that's largely what this comes from. So how about this? The, how about um, the point well taken, Georg? Um, I can have some of those discussions and just kind of see if, if resources people would be available to help <laughs> if there's an interest in, in the badging process for projects. Okay, um, more to come on that. So this one shouldn't take long. Travis, <laughs> GitLab, GitHub. Sean, you had put that on there. Yes, we can't hear you. You're on mute. I muted myself to not be a distraction, but hopefully this work works now. We've we've done some we've done some deeper digging, and the we can use GitHub Actions. Um, it's going to cost us probably in the neighborhood of one thousand to fifteen hundred dollars to make the transition. Um, and if we did that, I guess the question is. So that is less expensive than I had previously thought. And I just wanted to open the analysis up. GitHub has done some things that have made it easier um, recently. And <clears throat> Travis CI has reverted back to some of their practices that caused problems earlier in the last few weeks. Um, so the, the cost of Git Augur moving to GitHub was one of the issues that there's still costs unrelated to Travis CI, like I teach all my classes and coordinate all of my work with developers around the world using GitHub. So I'd have to bring them up to speed on a new platform. But um, I think Augur's, the cost factor for Augur had been a significant obstacle. And so I think 
I wanted to say that I see a way through that if we can get some support for it. But I still don't know that leaving the platform that every other Linux Foundation project is on is a good idea. But I didn't want to insincerely, now that I know we have a way through, not do any, not say something. You know what I mean? I want to be forthright about about that specific cost. I think there are other costs. I think there are other reasons to stay with GitHub, but that one's gone. I thought the primary reason was because of the amount of time that it would take to migrate. Yeah, I think I think it will take a lot of time to migrate. I think there's a lot of relearning that every member of the community would need to do. Certainly, every member of my team would need to do relearning, and I don't think my team is the only team. So, you know, I do think there are the overall costs don't remain very high, but we were we were in the mid hundreds of hours to move things earlier, and some of the developments since then. Carter did an analysis uh, earlier this week, and I guess over the weekend, and those costs are lower than we had originally estimated because of the changes. I don't think that, yeah. I still favor staying with GitHub for a variety of reasons, but um, our costs were by far, I think, the greatest, and, and I wanted to be forthright about that change. So if I, uh... If I remember this discussion previously, uh, was it was it decided that like all of the working groups and all of the software would move to GitLab, or no one would? Yes, that's what we decided. So that's what we decided. And I'll be candid; I was uh, I was surprised that it was on the agenda last week, so I wasn't prepared to have the discussion. And um, I live in a world where you know once we decide something, we kind of let it sit for a year and. It, circumstances change uh, and we can revisit it but um, so so I was caught a little bit off guard last week and so I went back and did some due diligence just to be sure so I, I think it's to the community I, I again I still think we should stay with github for the moment at least but I wanted to be forthright So now that we have Georg and Daniel on, I think this came up via uh, Grimoire Lab folks, this issue. So do you have comments on this? I don't think either of you were on the call last week, so. No, that's so, one of the reasons we tabled it. From what I'm hearing is that Grimoire Lab is also switching to GitHub Actions. And so as of right now, we are operating as if the decision we had made last year to stay on GitHub was to be how we move forward. Yeah, and, and Carter actually had read through in one of our minutes that that's what you were doing. And so he looked more closely at it. Um, and so that is that, that would be our plan going forward. I, we would stay with Travis as we make the transition, but ultimately we'd be headed to GitHub Actions because for, for many reasons that probably are the same ones you would be doing it. So am I hearing it right that the, from a GitHub Git Lab perspective, it's still just, the, it's the same, it's staying on GitHub, but moving off Travis to GitHub Actions in both the cases of Grimoire Lab and Augur, is that right? Yeah, yes it is. Okay. Um, and, and I, but I think last week the discussion really focused on do we do we revisit the changing to GitHub, to change it to GitLab question. And, and so that was really why I brought it back up because I didn't want to block it without gotcha. being forthright. I, I, think, I think the best, it's the best interest of the project since we're very nascent to stay with the platform that we're on, but to remain open to the fact that GitLab is a sound platform. It is the only open source one. There are reasons in the long term to consider a move, but right now, right now is not the time for the long term sustainability of our own project. Would be my my perspective. 
I think if we wait long enough, GitHub will annoy us in some way and then we will move up. Yes, it's like roommates. Then, then it'll be sooner the better. Um, I, I don't know that the sooner the better. I, I think I think we this is something that maybe we bring up every year or so and evaluate. I don't I don't think like we want to. Uh, I don't think we want to spend a lot of time having this discussion every year. All right, then moving on. I'll take that as a cue. <laughs> um, Sean, you had a couple of comments or comments. You had a couple of notes here. With our yeah. ML release, do you want to mention yeah. something about that? Uh, just that we have a, from the group of summer of code um, way that Augur works is we we do a bunch of workers that do things, and we have workers that send notifications, workers that gather data, workers that do machine learning, and uh, we the the workers that gather GitLab data are released, and I've been in the process of essentially making all of the machine learning workers work. And it's not that they don't work, they actually work all just fine by themselves. Um, there have been changes to Augur where I've been changing the necessary configuration parameters. And those are those are reaching a, a, a point in time where they will be very close to release. So I'm just, I'm excited about that because I think it lets us get insights about the thousands of repositories some of us are keeping track of very quickly uh there's six different new insight workers uh, that are based on various machine learning algorithms uh, that cluster identify discourse trends changes in sentiment changes in uh, similarity uh, i'll release some notes about it but but i'm pretty excited about that i wanted to make a note to the team right on and then the, the finally since i got the final thing um, we've decided to change the approach that we take to Augur meetings. Um, an hour every two weeks of people sitting around talking about Augur has not been, it's, it's different work. The software work and the metrics work is just different. And so the idea that we're going to try this year is we're going to have a monthly Augur meeting the first someday of every month that uh, you have to be determined. And then uh, every couple of weeks, probably one Friday, one Saturday, uh, we will host a hackathon where there's a list of things that we want to work on and it gives people who are interested in the software part, the development part of the chaos project, a chance to get to know, to have the developers there to ask questions. Uh, in general, each of those hackathons will focus on a particular piece of Augur. Um, so it's an experiment that I think better suits software work than metrics development. Um, and I wanted to announce that's happening, although I have not developed the specifics yet. I'll be interested to see how that goes. Me too. And if we can <laughs> make that work for Grimoire Lab as well, because as you know, last year we stopped the Grimoire Lab calls for the same reason. Yeah. Uh, one thing um, I'd like to ask, and I don't know if we have the answer to this, is Yesterday, I had tried to do that uh, using the chaos channel with breakout rooms and maybe it's zoom changed its app or maybe the breakout rooms are something we pay for that we're not paying for. But for a hackathon breakout rooms are an excellent tool and I wasn't able to figure out the breakout rooms in our zoom channel and I don't know if there's a way that we can. Um, pay for breakout rooms or if I'm stupid and I can't find them on this <laughs> instance of Zoom, but, uh, you know, because like then we, you know, potentially in the future, it huh. could be Grimoire Lab Augur and you can go to breakout room for this work and a breakout room for some other work. Breakout rooms are really helpful um, for this type of work. And I just can't find it in our instance of uh, Zoom and I don't. So, so one of just said you had to pay for them. I'll, I'll ask, I'll reach yeah. out to Brian. If they're not expensive, like for, to me, not expensive is it's not less, it's not more than let's say $50 a month. I think if, if we don't have to subscribe for a year, I think it's worth a six month experiment. 
I hope breakout rooms are not fifty dollars a month. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't know. I, yeah, you know, it's like, I, corporations do their pricing based on what they think they can get people to pay, and corporations are usually the people using breakout rooms. I don't I'll, know if we get. I'll ping Brian. That's totally yeah. fine. Yeah, okay. That, but that would be a nice feature for what I'm trying to do. I can use right. my. I can use my own university account, but I think it's better if I keep it in the chaos link so that it's yep. all one place for everything. No problem. I'll send that email right now. Yeah. All right. We are at the end of the agenda and we're at the end of time. So we went to the end. <laughs> yes. So we won. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's great to see everybody. Um, nice to meet oh. new folks on the call as well. So one more quick thing. The risk Wait. meeting at the 10 a.m. on the 19th of January is going to focus on dependencies. And I've, I've, I've secured a number of people with a strong interest in dependencies to participate um, from different organizations. And I think it would, it's a good, if you're interested in dependencies, I think it'll be a good starting point discussion and we can decide to go from there, where to go from there. Good addition. Thank you. Sure. All right. Don, did you have something? We're going to say bye. Bye. I was just going to say bye. I was waiting for it to wrap up. <laughs> I, I, I watch everybody. <laughs> I watch those yeah. things. All right. I'm matching bye. your hair. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. 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 B